we're here with our keeper of archaeology, Dave Allen, and today he's going to show us some of his rocks from the collection. Yes, yeah, Stacey, I thought uh, today we'd talk about the daily grind, because these are <laughs> quern stones, uh, so their stones have been specially shaped um, uh, in order to turn grain into flour, so they are milling stones. Um, and there's two types, as you can probably see. Uh, there's what we call a saddle quern, that's here, uh, and a rotary quern, which is, is here. Now, if I start with the saddle quern, then this is the type of grinding stone that would be around from the time of the first farmers. So mm -hmm. in the Neolithic or New Stone Age, when they started planting seed and growing crops and so on, they needed something to turn the, the, the grain into uh, a usable flour, so this was uh, developed. Um, and we call it um, this stone here, the saddle, for obvious reasons, I think. <laughs> yeah. And then there are a number of smaller stones, which are the riders, and they would be pushed backwards and forwards like this. Um, and it's a pretty common sort of find on sites of um, Neolithic, New Stone Age, mm -hmm. or Bronze Age, uh, and into the Iron Age date. Uh, and this sort of quern, there's even some, um, uh, well, from uh, Egypt, little mm -hmm. tiny models, clay models and, that they've made, of people actually using these. And you can oh. sort of see that, you know, they're there and that whole uh, method going on. And it must have been a re very repetitive, obviously, um, and, and really hard process. Um, you know, and I think they've even shown with some of the skeletal remains that arthritis and so on would be uh, a result of, of that sort of constant uh, hard work. So there's your, your saddle quern and your rider. Uh, and it was replaced um, about 300 BC, so about 2,300 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, at least from the evidence of Danebury, by the rotary quern. Um, and you know, by its very name, it's, it's round. And that also comprises of two stones, the lower stone and an upper stone. And this one is obviously just half. It's a broken upper stone. And there, the top stone goes round on the lower stone. I don't know why I spin it right round. I think you see people doing that with it. And that's the same thing. You put the grain in there, and then it goes through there, and the flour will come out around the, the side there. And um, this seems to have caught on as a much more efficient better way, because it then sort of replaces the saddle quern. And, and this is, we know this from the Roman period. Mm. Uh, and by then, of course, they're starting to uh, employ other um, means of power, so water. So there's a, 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 a Roman a water mill been excavated at Fullerton, uh, where you know, the water was used as a power for the mill. Um, and then obviously on into the medieval period, we get wind mills, wind power and so on. And the stones get bigger as the, you know, the machine, because the technology gets, it gets better, I suppose. One thing I wanted to say about the Danebury ones, um, in fact, over the 20 years of digging at Danebury, they found 17,000 bits of stone with smooth facets on, which could be part of quails. Um, it, that sounds a lot, but when it actually boiled down to it, and they you know, put bits of fragments together and worked out the definite ones, then there were about um, 300 rotary quails that they could say they discovered, um, and about 200 of the saddle quirns. Oh. So, you know, 500 quirns altogether. Um, and for the early ones, there might be sarsen stone, so that comes from Salisbury Plain, places like that, you can mm. find sarsens naturally in Hampshire as well. Um, but as time went on, then they seem to look uh, like the green sand, especially. You know? mm. um, and they've done some geological work tracking down the actual source of that particular green sand. Um, and near Midhurst okay. in Sussex, there's um, a place called Lodsworth, and there's a quarry there um, where they found the sort of rough outs. So, you know, they can actually, if you go there and you find a rough, roughly circular bit of stone, they've started to work it into a quern and then abandoned it. And so they're quite happy because of the uh, similarity of the 
grain of the stone and what they found there, that that was where the querns came from. And a lot of those got to Danebury. So it's 40 miles away. So, you know, these, these things, which, um, you know, are pretty <laughs> hefty. It was obviously worth the effort of carrying them that wow. distance and probably greater distances too. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are people who've spent a lot of time researching into the querns and where the stone actually came from. Anyway, in that regard, here's a old one out. This one here is a quartz conglomerate. Ooh. Yeah. Um, sometimes called a pudding stone, because actually the um, all the little pebbles in there looks like sort of concrete, doesn't it? Really, mm. um, they are all held together in this matrix, and they're all been planed off like you know plums in a pudding um, with the uh, grinding action. Because believe it or not, this is actually one of those. It's a bottom stone. There's the pivot hole. Mm. That's the smooth surface there. So it's a broken example. But again, it would be that sort of grinding process there. And this one, um, again, they've spent a lot of time tracking it down. It's thought it might come from Normandy, uh, might come from Hertfordshire, but now they're pretty happy that the source is Worms Heath in Surrey. And that actually turns out to be, by coincidence, about 40 miles away from Danbury as well. <laughs> um, now, this is a complete stone. I mean, this is about half of one, I'd say. And that's all my effort to pick that up. <laughs> so when it was a complete stone, you know, that's a real sort of uh, two-man job, isn't it? Or you've got some other way of carrying it, <laughs> dragging it on the sledge, or, um, you know, you've got some animal power involved in getting it those 40 miles to the site. So lots of quern stones, lots of um, daily grind, <laughs> you know, in prehistoric societies. Well, Still goes on, of course, in some parts of the of the world. That that's how you turn your uh, grain into flour. And of course, the thing about it is, as you grind away, little bits of stone become detached, and they'll get in with the uh, with the flour. They get into your bread or whatever you're making. Mm, crunchy. Um, well, exactly. And you do find in some early societies that teeth have been worn down very smooth uh, because of there's a lot of grit in there. Uh, bread, and presumably that same sort of you know, <laughs> cleansing goes on throughout the, the system. But uh, yes, you know, sometimes some of the Danbury teeth on the skeletons are very, very flat, very Ooh. smooth tops, because as they're chewing away, they are inadvertently grinding their teeth into nice, uh, smooth um, surfaces. <laughs> so there you are, some nice prehistoric quirks. Well, <laughs>